when someone sees or interacts with your brand seven times, they're much more likely to evangelize you, become loyal, love you, talk about you to other people, and that's where you generate the majority of your revenue. Hi, it's Rhett Power. It's great to be here uh, today. I've got Neil Patel, uh, who just came off stage. Uh, it was a, 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 an amazing talk. Uh, now, I've got to go through Neil's sort of accolades. New York Times bestseller, uh, uh, it? top influencer, Wall Street Journal top influencer, Forbes, we, we say that uh, <laughs> you're top, one of the top 10 marketers. Uh, Entrepreneur says you're one of the most brilliant uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, you're recognized, you were recognized by President Obama. Yeah. So is, does that define Neil Patel? The, no. All those accolades, all the Not awards? Really. Like, I just see myself as an average guy. I suck at sports. I love Netflix. Uh, hang out a lot with my kids. My kid wakes me up every day banging on my head with a remote control to turn on TV. <laughs> like I just see myself as a normal person. Okay. Well, how do you, how do you attribute where you've gotten to professionally? What, what's sort of the, what drive do you have? Where, where does the motivation come from? Where do you find the inspiration in your content? Talk about that a little bit. Talk about that journey. Because I think that journey, a lot of people say, yeah. you say you're a normal guy. Um, but I want to I want to get into that a little bit. Why 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 you've been successful? If you're not a normal yeah. guy, how how are you so super successful? Well, first off, the drive comes from loving to help people. So when I started out as an entrepreneur, okay, I didn't have money to pay people, mentors, coaches, or any of that. And a lot of people helped me out for free and got helped me get to where I am. So then when I started making some money, I tried paying some of these people. They're like, no, just keep paying it forward, and I loved it. And getting that satisfaction of let's say like that mom in the middle of nowhere saying like, hey, I lived in the middle of the United States, my son worked at Home Depot, my husband left me, I own a bed and breakfast, and I can't send him to college, which is what his dream was. But I read some marketing tips where your bed and breakfast is now fully booked, my son was able to quit Home Depot, I paid for his college and he can live a better life, like that makes me happy. So that's where a lot of the drive comes from. The results, the accolades, the awards, that comes from having an amazing team. It's not me, it's the team. It doesn't matter how talented you are, even if you're Elon Musk, you're not gonna send rockets up into space without an amazing team. SpaceX, Tesla, they're all great companies. Elon is tremendous. No one should ever um, discount him, but what makes him so great also is his amazing team. Without that amazing team, Tesla wouldn't be as good. SpaceX wouldn't be as good. Right. You need right. amazing people. The people, Forbes is a great company. It's the people who write amazing content, create amazing content at Forbes that makes Forbes so popular. Yeah, how do you, because one of the struggles, I mean, I was an entrepreneur at a toy company, and one of the things that really struck a chord that you just said was, you know, we got lucky one year at Toy Fair, and we, we walked out, uh, uh, we were a $100,000 company, we walked out a $9 million company, and the reason that happened, and the reason we were able to fulfill those orders is because we had paid our vendors, even when we didn't really have the money to pay yeah. our vendors. And they came, they went to bat for us. When we got all those orders, they said, look, we'll give you six months of credit. And they stood by us when we, That's awesome. when we blew it up. And I mean, it sounds like what you're saying to me is, is like, you, 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 you gotta take care. Is that, is that really? You, you gotta take care of people, but also hire amazing people. How do you do that? That's, that, that's the trick. So taking care of people is easy. Compensate them, be there when they're having personal problems. I don't believe in this is work, leave your personal issues at home. I believe in, oh, you have personal issues? Can I help you solve any of them? Great, love to, right? Your team members are like family members. Um, but how to hire great people? There's actually a very easy way to do it. Go look on LinkedIn, go find people that are in the exact role that you're hiring for. Look for people who have done that within your industry, at least at two other competitors. Not one, but two. Because if they have direct market experience and they're at multiple competitors, the chances are they'll do well for you. Now the other layer that I like adding on top of this is make sure that they've been at those companies for a while, so that way you know they're loyal, they're not just hopping around, you gotta make sure they're a cultural fit, and you have to make sure that those other companies found them valuable. See, when you interview people, people always say, yeah, I did this and I caused these results. You don't really ever know. You can't call up their boss and be like, did they actually do this? Because I'm looking to poach them. But what you can do is see if they've been promoted multiple times at that company. 
see if they were that amazing, they would have, in most cases, been promoted multiple times. Right. And if they worked at two other competitors, they started from the bottom, they've been promoted multiple times at both organizations, been there a while, and they're a cultural fit, the chances are they'll be able to do it the third time successfully for you as well. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, I think that's gold right there. Um, how do you, you're a soft, I mean, you've got a software company, agency, personal branding, you're speaking. How do you, and I hate to word, work-life balance, yeah. but how do you find harmony when you're trying to manage all of that? Like, what's, what's your system that you have? You must have a system or some sort of method. Or do you have an accountability person that like keeps you, you know, keeps you in check? How do you manage all of that? So I have an assistant who helps me with my daily tasks and daily life, which helps out a lot. Um, I've used Google Calendar for everything. I use Tasks for everything. I don't go to sleep until all my emails are read. Uh, I try to do that every night unless I'm in a plane with no internet. And I don't have as much of a work-life balance. You know, I would love to say I, sh I spend a ton of time with my kids. But for the time I do spend, I make it count. So whatever I'm spending time on, I try to make it 110%. Because even in a small amount of minutes or hours, it all adds up and you just gotta give it your all. Right. On the flip side, I know a lot of people who spend time with their kids and a lot of time, but they're just watching TV and ignoring them in the background. On the flip side, I'll play with them. I'll let my daughter put makeup on my face, although it's fake makeup. <laughs> you have any pictures? <laughs> Actually, I do. Not on my phone, but my wife does. Whatever makes her happy. Like, I'm 110% into anything I do, so that way I'm getting the most out of my time. Yes, I do need a better balance. That's hard because I love my family, and I love working, and I can't stop, and my family accepts it. But whatever you're spending time on, just give it 110% because you're making those moments count. What's uh, I'm gonna switch gears completely now. Yeah. How do you? How can businesses be successful with inbound, market, inbound marketing in 2022? Yeah, so this is a funny one. A lot of businesses believe that, oh, my competition is doing really well on Google. I need to do SEO or I need to do paid advertising because they do it. It's actually right. not one channel that makes a business anymore. See, Facebook back in the day grew through that email viral loop. So and so is on Facebook. They invited you to join it. Dropbox grew through. Uh, social sharing tweet to get more space all channels eventually get crowded competitive and expensive the way to do well in inbound marketing today and in the future is to take an omni-channel approach okay. you, you got to do press whether it's being featured on Forbes or somewhere else right or on TV you got to do SEO you got to do paid ads people are like is SEO better than paid ads no you do all channels as long as they're profitable and they work out you got to do social media whether Facebook's algorithm favors you or it doesn't favor you. By being on all channels, you're going to create something in this brand awareness and marketing is called the rule of seven. When someone sees or interacts with your brand seven times, they're much more likely to evangelize you, become loyal, love you, talk about you to other people, and that's where you generate the majority of your revenue. And an interesting stat from Adobe, roughly 40% of your revenue comes from 8% of your visitors. Really? And those are the repeat visitors. They keep buying from you. And that's coming from 8% who become loyal. And you need to generate more loyal customers by just being omnipresent and being throughout multiple channels. Because what we found is when you're omnichannel, people are more willing to buy from you because they're seeing your brand constantly and they start trusting you. Where do, where do we get our information? I mean, as a CEO of, of a smaller company now, where do I get really good information about that ad spend? About yeah, you know, where 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 can I find that information? A lot of Google searches. Right. There's a lot of tools like we have one called Ubersys, which is free. There's tools out there like SEMrush. Google Analytics provides a lot of um, data with your own site. But yeah, there's similar web for market research on your competition. But the data is out there and it's accessible for free. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, a, that's the toughest thing to do is find out where you should spend your money, right? Yes. And where you should put that ad money. And, right? and it's all about ROI. What work for your competition may not work for you. If you spend all you can make too, spend as much as you can as long as it's profitable. The moment you spend a dollar and you're losing 50 cents, you spend too much. All right, yeah, we got to wrap it up. I hate, I hate to go, but thank you so much. Uh, thanks for having me.